It was summertime on the island of Sodor, and the Fat Controller's Railway was busier than ever. There were more passengers, and on top of it all, the main line was undergoing an extensive overhaul. The bad winter weather kept forcing our repair schedule back, Sir Topham Hatt had explained. I have no choice but to carry out the repairs during the busy season. Good gracious, I duck in the sheds that night. As soon as I arrive with one train, I leave with another. Pah, said Gordon, wait until you've had a taste of mainline work, little westerners. We're the ones who should really be complaining. Well, you won't find me complaining, smiled Oliver. I'm grateful. Better to be busy with passengers than on the run from diesels. You know, said Henry, I was in danger of being sent away once. I'm glad Sir Topham Hatt's in charge. No one else would have given me a chance like that. Mm, however, Oliver said grimly, he can't save every engine, much as I wish he could. Soon the engines went to sleep. All except Henry, who couldn't help but think about what Oliver had said. Henry's job was to help inspect the main line bridges. As they were being mended, he had to take the old parts to the other railway. A diesel would then take them on to the steelworks to be melted down. It was hard work, but Henry didn't mind. Usually, Henry would only take a few trucks of broken beams, but when he picked up his load that day, an entire bridge section was waiting for him. Oh, the whole thing's busted, grunted a workman, surprised it didn't collapse before we arrived. We'll have to start from scratch now. Henry was glad the bridge hadn't collapsed. With a mighty heave, he set off along the main line. He arrived as usual at the other railway, but the diesel was nowhere to be seen. Bother, he thought. If that diesel doesn't get here soon, I'm going to be late. Just then, a loud growl filled the air. Henry winced as the diesel slowly pulled up alongside. For engines of the future, said Henry, you certainly are slow. Well, it's not my fault, flounced the diesel. It's that rusty old kettle. Henry looked over. A big, rusty, scrap engine sat on the diesel's train. Goodness gracious me, what's happened to him? Given up for scrap ages ago, said the diesel. Finally got orders to take him down the breaker's yard. The diesel sighed. Oh, poor engine. He had always hoped to get saved, too. Then... Henry remembered his conversation with Oliver. Maybe he still can be, he beamed. I tell you what, I'll take him on my return train. I'm sure we can find a home for him. The diesel wasn't sure. The steelworks is expecting a steam engine today. You won't get far before they catch wind that their payload's gone missing. But Henry had another idea. Well, what if I trade you, he said. This corroded old bridge section for him. The diesel looked back at the flatbed and smiled. They'll be more than happy with that. You've got a deal. <laughs> Henry was pleased. Soon the two engines had traded their loads and parted ways. It was hard work to carry the old engine, but Henry struggled on. Suddenly, he heard a voice. Uh, uh excuse me, uh, you're not gonna... Turn me into a bridge, are ya? Henry chuckled. Not if I can help it. Oh, continued the engine. Oh, that's a relief, then. <laughs> but, but, why did you rescue me? We can't save every engine, Henry replied. But we can certainly try. At last, they stopped in a goods yard. Henry let out a sigh of relief. You'll be safe here until I can speak with Sir Topham Hat, Henry smiled. Well, here I am. The two engines jumped. 
Sir Top of Hat walked towards them. A bit difficult to sneak about with a load like that, wouldn't you say, Henry? Henry blushed. I, I, uh, mm, I, I'm sorry, sir, I... Pardon me, sir, the engine interrupted, if I may. Sir Topham Hat paused and nodded. Your Henry's a true hero. I was bound for the steelworks today. If he hadn't come along, I might have been turned into a... a, a bridge, he shuddered. There was silence. Well, I understand if you can't afford to keep me, sir, the engine continued. But even if I could just have somewhere to stay hidden, just until I find a new home. We cannot allow that, said Sir Topham Hatt bluntly. The engines were upset. Henry will tell you, he continued, that no engine on this railway is a layabout. And that includes you. The engines beamed. Do, what do you mean it, sir? Most certainly, smiled Sir Topham Hatt. You're just the sort of engine I need to help on the main line. Henry, he said, turning to the green engine. You'll be taking, uh, uh what did you say your name was? Richard, sir, smiled the engine, at your service. <laughs> Very good, Richard. Uh, Henry, you'll be taking Richard here to the works. We've no time to lose. He turned and walked back to his office to make the arrangements. The two engines looked at each other and smiled. For an engine who seemed so near the end, Richard's life was only just beginning. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at the works. Richard had been swiftly repaired, and his fresh paint glistened in the sun. How are you, Richard? He smiled. I feel fantastic. Uh, uh, sp splendiferous. Uh, very well, sir. Thank you. That's good, laughed Sir Topham Hatt. We'll start you on local runs. Then you can work your way up to the express. I'm sure you and Gordon will work splendidly together. Richard wasn't sure who Gordon was, but he was certainly looking forward to being useful again. Meanwhile, the other engines were finding Gordon insufferable. He boasted endlessly during the busy summer season, never missing a chance to remind them how vital he was to the railway. Most engines simply ignored him, but Donald and Douglas had a plan. Do you hear about that new engine, Dougie? Donald asked. Ugh, the wee lad Henry found, replied Douglas. Aye, he's supposed to be taking the express, I hear. Gordon said nothing, but the twins knew he was listening intently. And no a moment too soon, said Donald. Our passengers need a reliable lad. <laughs> Maybe they'll be on time now. The express is always on time, Gordon interjected. I ensure it. That's no what I heard, smiled Donald slyly. We Duncan said you were a minute late the other day. Ah, I made up the time, barked Gordon. <laughs> Maybe, snickered Douglas, but before you know, one minute turns to two, and two to three, and three to, well, you know. <laughs> Perhaps our top map will nip that problem in the bud with Richard. Ha 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 The twins chuckled as they left the station. Gordon was very cross. And secretly, a little nervous, I'll show them, I'll show them, he fussed. I'll not have my express stolen by some, mm, some vagrant engine. Hm. That night, Richard arrived in the sheds. Henry was quick to make introductions, and the other engines wanted to know all about him, except Gordon and James. 
Ridiculous, muttered Gordon. How can that engine possibly take my express? He wouldn't stand a chance, replied James. Truthfully, he was a bit more worried about his own chance pulling the express. The very notion, grumbled Gordon. It's, it's disgraceful. Disgusting, added James. Despicable. Gordon and James jumped, unaware that Henry had been listening. You two are despicable, Henry went on. You gave Oliver a hero's welcome, but Richard gets the cold buffer. Oliver, replied Gordon, fought his way here. Richard was in the right place at a convenient time. Say what you will, though it's far from the truth, said Henry plainly. I'm not wasting any more time listening to your moaning. Gordon and James muttered to themselves. Um, was it something I said? asked Richard sadly. Considering you haven't said anything... Not at all, chuckled Henry. Leave them be. They'll come around eventually. They're afraid you'll give them a run for their money. Richard wasn't sure what you steam engines had for money, or why they'd be running after it, but he was worried about Gordon and James. Things were no better next morning. Gordon kept to himself, a grimace on his face. He hurried along with his express, hardly sparing a whistle to passing engines. He came to a stop at Edward Station. As he waited, Richard came carrying a work train. He whistled a friendly greeting and rushed past. Did you hear how he whistled at me, Edward? Gordon cried. Most engines call that saying hello, Gordon, Edward chuckled. I'll tell you what it's called, huffed Gordon. It's a taunt. Oh, he thinks he can take my express, does he? Well, I'll give him something to whistle about. <laughs> Some engines, sighed Edward as Gordon snorted away. On time, on time, grumbled Gordon as he raced along. I'll do better than that. I'll be early. Slow down, slow down, moaned the coaches. They thought they were going to fly off the rails. Gordon hadn't realized all his running around was starting to take a toll on him. Every now and then a wisp of sparks flew from his funnel. He arrived safely at the big station and he was early. His driver, concerned, looked him all over. I'm not sure what, he sighed to the fireman, but something has him all fired up. You are right, Gordon. Never better, he replied hastily. This wasn't true. Gordon did feel a bit strange, but he wasn't about to let on to it. Soon it was time to leave. The guard's whistle blew, and Gordon started off again. The sparks came from his funnel once more, as he picked up speed and puffed towards the countryside. Thunderous noise, Gordon began wishing steam and slowing down. Ouch! What's happened? <coughs> Something's broken! <coughs> the driver coughed through the billowing steam. Goodness knows what, though. Um, Gordon? Gordon looked down. As the smoke parted, he saw Trevor, the traction engine. Trevor, what are you doing here? quizzed Gordon. Well, stuttered Trevor, I, I, I was going to ask, what are you doing here? Gordon looked around and gasped. He'd broken down on the level crossing. Oh my, he whispered. 
It didn't take long for traffic to build up. Gordon winced as the sound of irritated horns filled the air. My aching smoke box, he groaned. Soon, Gordon heard something else. In the distance were sirens. The fire brigade came as close as they could before being blocked by the traffic. Soon the fire chief ran up to them. What are you doing? he cried. We can't get to the fire if you're blocking the road. What fire? quizzed Gordon. At a signal box down the line. This is the fastest way there, but we can't get through now. But, but, stammered Gordon, I can't move. Suddenly a whistle sounded out. It was Richard and the work train. He drew to a halt close by. Wow, he gasped. Do you see all that smoke, Gordon? Hard to when I'm facing away, muttered Gordon. But this is no time for gawking. We have an emergency. Richard listened and thought for a moment. Well, why don't we load those hoses into my train? I'll take the fireman down the line myself. I've got a full, well, um, nearly full enough, a uh, pretty full tender. Pa! sniffed Gordon. Preposterous. That would never work. Oh, yes, it would, replied the fire chief. Let's hurry. No time to lose. The men quickly loaded the hoses and got on board. Richard rushed down the line to the signal box. The firemen wasted no time firing their hoses from right inside Richard's tender. Richard was amazed. Soon the fire was out. The signalman had escaped unharmed, but the signal box was destroyed. You're our hero, Richard, cried the fireman. What would we have done without you? Been stuck in traffic, Richard joked. With all that honking, you'd have had as big a headache as... Goodness, Gordon! Oh, I'd forgotten about him! Richard raced back to the level crossing. He buffered up to Gordon and took him on to the next station. Gordon said nothing, clanking sadly behind. When they arrived, Sir Topham Hat was there. I can see that Richard lit a fire in your boiler, Gordon, he said sternly, but I'd prefer if you didn't use that spark to cause mishaps like this. The signalman confirmed sparks from your funnel caused the blaze. Now we have a signal box to rebuild, and an express engine out of commission. Gordon blushed. I'm, I'm truly sorry, sir. Mm, I should think so, replied Sir Topham Hatt. It's off to the works with you. Perhaps it will give you time to think about your behavior. As for you, Richard, he beamed, I'm very proud of you. Your quick thinking helped put the fire out before it could spread. I'd like you to handle the express until Gordon gets back. Oh, sir, beamed Richard, it would be my honor. And so Richard took charge of the express. He kept a time, too, and was a hit with both coaches and passengers alike. He did it so well that James was jealous. But that's another story. Richard, the new engine, was thrilled by the express. He loved thundering down the line, his fire burning fiercely, and the coaches clattering behind him. The passengers were most impressed, and the other engines were grateful for his help, all except one. Ridiculous, James scoffed. He's hardly been on the island a month, and he's given the express. Whatever happened to seniority? You certainly sound like a senior, but with all that boiler aching, teased Duck. Even 
even if you had the Express, you'd just grumble about being overworked. You should be thanking Richard. Thanking him, James gawked. For what? I'm stuck on maintenance trains because of him. I must say, it's quite nice getting to take the Express, said Boko, humbly. It rarely makes you feel a part of the railway. Let Richard have his time, James. Perhaps you'll need a break soon, and then you'll have your chance. James said no more, and fussed off. Later, James backed down onto his works train at the big station. Richard sizzled at the platform. All right there, James, he beamed. Are you enjoying your day? Not as much as you, I imagine, he grumbled. Oh, you noticed, Richard replied obliviously. Well, it's very nice taking the express and all, but I'd be happy with any train. It's good to be moving again. You're not getting worn out, quizzed James. Well, only a little, sighed Richard. Just getting back into shape, that's all. Just then the guard's whistle blew. Oh, that's my cue, said Richard. Goodbye, James, and thanks for taking the maintenance trains. Of course Richard meant this genuinely, but James was seething. He's mocking me, he fumed. Happy with any train, is he? Doesn't even appreciate what he's got. James spent the rest of the day with the maintenance crews. He slowly moved the breakdown cranes where they were needed as they loaded old scrap into trucks and lowered the new steel into place. The snail's pace of it all further irritated James, who could think of nothing but Richard. I'll show him, I'll show him, he muttered. He was rough with the cranes as he moved them about. Finally, as he bumped them again, there was a snap. You stupid engine, scolded the foreman. You've damaged the support cables. Now we can't secure the cranes. So, James replied. So, huffed the foreman, we can't take them back to the yard in case they start swinging. And with how you've been banging about, that'll likely be the case. We'll have to leave them here overnight. This, of course, didn't bother James. The men crammed into the works coach, and James hauled the train with no cranes back to the yard. The next morning, Richard found it hard to wake up. His fire wouldn't start, and his joints felt stiff. I don't know what's wrong, he wheezed. I felt just fine yesterday. Oh, you poor end said James with mock sympathy. I tell you what, why don't I take your train? And then once you get up and going, you can have an easy day out with the maintenance crews, hmm? Oh, oh, oh thank you, James, Richard smiled weakly. Most kind of you. Don't mention it, James muttered slyly as he headed for the station. James could see the coaches waiting at the platform and began to grow excited until he saw a familiar face at the head of the train. Good morning, James, beamed Boko. Have you come to see me off? What are you doing? demanded James. I meant to be taking Richard's first train. Get off. Go on. But this isn't Richard's first train, replied Boko, puzzled. I was scheduled to take the express today. Then what am I supposed to be doing? growled James. Ah, James, said Sir Topham Hat. I hear you're covering for Richard. You must be off to the works. Our new rake of express coaches are waiting to be brought back here. James could hardly believe it. His plan had backfired. Empty coaches, empty coaches, he grumbled as he set off up the line. Now, for all his good intentions... Richard could be a bit clumsy. By the time he finally rolled out of the shed, he was still feeling a bit groggy. Nice, easy day, he yawned. Oh, careful, called the foreman. We don't need another careless engine on the job today. S sorry, sir, called Richard. I'll be more careless. I mean, less 
Careful, um, oh, oh, he sighed, still trying to wake up. No one had bothered telling Richard about the crane cables. Finally, the foreman came up to him. We need to move to another bridge further up the line. Signalman's given us a path between the regular trains, and we can't miss it. Yes, sir, yawned Richard. Richard found it hard to start. With a bump, he got the cranes and trucks moving. He picked up speed, but no one saw the crane arm starting to swing about. At that moment, James came fussing along. Empty coaches, empty coaches, he grumbled. He saw Richard coming towards him. Better still, he muttered, Richard, shorter. Suddenly, James saw the crane arm swinging wildly from side to side. Stop, cried James, stop. But Richard was going too fast. Both engines applied their brakes. The crane arm had swung right into one of the new coaches. There was a hole in the wall now. The compartments were crushed and the seats flattened. The rest of the coaches quavered in fear, and James was in shock. Uh, uh, are you all right, James? cried Richard. But the replying voice didn't belong to James. Richard, bellowed Sir Topham Hat, what is the meaning of this? Uh, I don't know, sir. I'm truly sorry, sir, Richard stammered. I w was just going to the next work site, and, and you left without having the crane arm secured, I presume? Uh, I, uh, I suppose so, sir, Richard replied sadly. Sir Topham Hat sighed. Brand new coaches ruined just like that. Be very thankful, Richard, he added sternly, that those coaches were empty. Richard gulped. He was glad for that. You will spend the rest of the day in the shed, finished Sir Topham Hat. We shall discuss this later. James will take the express until further notice. Without another word, Richard puffed sadly away to the sheds. James took the coaches back to the works, and then made his own way to the shed. He got the express just as he'd wanted, but it didn't feel right. He puffed home with much to consider. Richard sadly took over the maintenance trains. He couldn't explain what had happened with the express coaches, but he'd felt he'd let Sir Topham Hat down. As he sat in the sidings, waiting for his trucks to be loaded, he'd see James pulling the express. He was too ashamed to say hello, and just looked down at his brothers. Little did he know, James was also racked with guilt. It's preposterous, fumed Gordon. He had just returned from the works and heard what had happened. How could Sir Topham Hat ever think that a clumsy engine like him could ever take the express? <laughs> it wasn't Richard's fault, Gordon, Henry replied calmly. Ha! Gordon sniffed. He doesn't even know how it happened. My brand new express coaches, too. <laughs> Nothing but carelessness, if you ask me. <laughs> James didn't say a word. 
You're being awfully quiet, Henry observed. Well, that's because I don't have anything else to add, huffed James. He shut his eyes and went to sleep, leaving Henry rather perplexed. The next day, Gordon took his first express run since being mended. He felt better than ever and was enjoying his journey when he saw Richard in the distance. Richard could see him, too. Oh, dear, he thought nervously. It's Gordon. Oh, what will he say? What will he say? Richard was so busy worrying, he bumped into a flatbed, and the old steel girder spilled onto the ground below as Gordon sped past. Definitely clumsy, Gordon grunted. He disappeared, leaving a disappointed Richard behind. Now, the steel trucks aren't usually troublesome, but they were agitated today, hauling rusted metal, sitting around in the baking sun, and being bumped by Richard or grating on them. Soon, they began teasing him. Defensive positions, boys, called one truck. Here comes Reckless Richard. I'm not reckless, Richard pouted. I'm... Ooh. Raff finished a truck, and the others giggled. Richard sighed. He felt like a really inadequate engine. The next morning, Richard was taking a fresh train of scrap metal down the main line. The trucks, annoyed with being woken up, started plotting their mischief. Richard moseyed along with his heavy load. What a bore, whispered a truck. We'll rust before we get there. So, said another one, let's help him along. The trucks tittered quietly to themselves, but Richard didn't notice. He was too busy focusing on being careful. Soon, they approached the top of Gordon's Hill. Now, called the trucks, they charged into Richard, sending the train careening down the hill. Ooh, cried Richard as the trucks chuckled in delight. He reached the bottom of the hill and rocketed through Edward Station. What fun, giggled a truck. All right, reckless Richard, you can slow us down now. I can't, Richard called over his screeching brakes. You're too heavy. The trucks then realized the perilous situation they'd gotten themselves into. Hold me back! Hold me back! barked Richard. The trucks did so, and they began slowing down, but not as fast as Richard had wanted. He heard a familiar whistle in the distance. It's Gordon! he cried. Oh no, the express! Suddenly, Richard noticed a siding with old vans. That looks like Henry's fish train, he thought. Richard made a decision. Whistling frantically, he got the signalman's attention and was diverted into the siding. They had been just in time. Gordon thundered by, aghast at what he'd seen. Richard lay near the siding, feeling sore and sad. Oh dear, he sighed. I've done it now. I really am reckless Richard. Just then, Henry arrived. Richard, he cried. What happened? Richard was most surprised. Henry? Oh, but I thought I'd crashed into you. Evidently not, replied Henry, confused. This is the flipper, isn't it? Kipper, Henry corrected, and it was at one point. These vans are too old for mainline work now. We just needed to get them out of the way. He paused. You weren't trying to crash into the Kipper, were you, Richard? Yes, said Richard. Well, uh, no, uh, I mean, uh, well, I, I figured that you'd forgive me for crashing into you sooner than, well, sooner than Gordon would. Henry laughed, and Richard followed suit. Soon, James arrived with the breakdown gang, and a top of hat. Dear me, Richard, he sighed. I don't know what to say. It seems to be one mess after another with you. I'm sorry, sir, he sighed. I'd help clean up the mess. Well, if, if I could, sir, but, uh, well, I'm, I'm off the rails right now, sir. 
Richard was only trying to prevent a worse accident, sir, Henry interjected. I'm not sure about that, Henry, Sir Topham Hatt replied sternly, given his track record. Actually, sir, um, well, it's, it's my track record. Everyone stopped and looked at James. He explained about the cranes, the express coaches, and his trick. Richard's been splendid with the express, sir, sighed James. I don't deserve it. You certainly don't, replied Sir Topham Hatt. I'd have thought you'd have known better than to pull stunts like this, James. Oh, clearly, a lesson still needs to be learned. You will stay on the maintenance trains until you can be trusted. James gulped and started to clear away the mess. And as for you, Richard prepared for the worst. It's off to the works with you. We can't have our newest express engine out of commission so soon. Richard beamed, and Henry whistled in delight. It had been some time since Richard had gone to be repaired. The other engines were beginning to worry, even Gordon, though he didn't want to admit it. But one night, as the engines were getting settled into their shed, here he comes! The yard was filled with cheers and whistles as Richard came backing into the sheds. Welcome home, smiled Henry. We're certainly glad to see you. Indeed we are, beamed Gordon. Uh, although... We hope you actually want to stay here with us, James sighed. After all, the way we treated you was, well... Oh, disgraceful, frowned Gordon. Disgusting, agreed James. Despicable, added Henry, glaring at the others. Oh, disagreeable, exclaimed Richard. The three big engines gasped. Oh, said Richard, plainly, was I not supposed to do that? The engines laughed and whistled again in delight. The three big engines had become four. Richard is thrilled to call the island of Sodor his home. He is still a bit clumsy, but always does his best to help the railway run smoothly. Gordon doesn't mind sharing express duties with Richard, and even James has taken a shine to him. Henry is most proud of him, and Richard is honored to call the Big Green Engine his best friend.